Hey guys, I hope you're having a really great weekend. Now in yesterday's video, I announced the uh, winner of the grow light and I also teased today's video and that would be if your, your cabbages, um, any of the brassica family, cabbages, um, broccoli, cauliflower, kohlrabi, Brussels sprouts, all of those guys, if they have holes in them, if they're being eaten alive by cabbage worms, today's video is for you. If you have that problem, I heard from you actually in the comments of yesterday's video that you have that problem. You can't even grow uh, brassicas anymore because of that. Your problems are over today. I promise. So there's four types of worms that come after your uh, cabbages or all those plants I just mentioned. And the, the most common two are cabbage loopers and cabbage white. Here, definitely cabbage white. You know those little white butterflies you see floating around the garden? Those are bad news. They don't, they don't make my garden look beautiful. I hate them every time I see them because I know what's coming. And you can see what's coming too when you look at your plants and they've got holes in them. Or maybe some of the leaves have actually been bitten off at the stem and they're just laying there. Those are cabbage worms. Now to diagnose them, it's really easy. You look for the damage. You might look for some of the poop, but you know what you're not gonna see? The worm. They are incredibly difficult to find. They're super camouflaged. They're usually on the underside of the leaf to keep themselves protected. In fact, that's where the butterfly lays the eggs. So if you look under the leaves, when you see those butterflies flying around, you're probably gonna see tiny little yellowish white eggs hanging from beneath the leaf. They hatch, they become the cabbage worm, and they start to devour your plant. And they're no joke. They can devour an entire crop in no time. And so you gotta get right on them. Now, first of all, as I always do, I talk prevention. How can we prevent that from happening so that we don't have to worry about taking care of it once it's happened? Well, there's only one surefire way. One surefire way to really make sure that you can keep 100% of them out of your garden, and that is with floating row covers. And you want to put those on right when you plant them, inspect the leaves first, make sure you don't have any eggs already on them. But once you plant them, put the, the row covers over there and pin them down on the edges so that the butterfly can't get underneath and you're good to go. Now, if you don't like the look of row covers, and I know I don't either, then there's another thing you can try. And that is with parasitic wasps. Trichogamma wasps eat the eggs of all the cabbage worms. So it will prevent it. They're tiny, very tiny. They do not sting humans, but they do get rid of your worm problem. Maybe not 100%, but they do a good job of it. So I'll put a link down below um, if I remember where that was, but I'll, put, I'll try to put a link down below where you can get those. Another thing you can do, and now here, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm going from the most foolproof to the least. So you've got the row, the row covers, and then you've got the wasps. The next thing would be companion planting. Now, there is one plant that is known to repel all of the cabbage butterflies, and that is thyme. So if you can plant thyme in and around your brassicas, um, it may keep them away. And then the last way to prevent them is to grow red coal crops, red cabbage, red, you know, all the different types of cabbages, uh, purple sprouting broccoli, even though the plant is green, so that might not work. But cabbages for sure, grow some red ones, and the white butterfly will not lay their eggs on that cabbage because they know that their babies are bright green and they're not going to be camouflaged on a red leaf. Okay, so you've done everything to prevent them, but you still get them, or you didn't do anything to prevent them and you got them, which you probably will if you don't have them already. So I've got three different methods for you to get rid of cabbage worms once you've got them. The first one, just hand pick them. Look under the leaves. And this is easier to do when you've got smaller plants, maybe, you know, uh, seedlings or uh, transplants. Look under the leaves, take the worms off. If you have chickens, they love them. If not, destroy them in whatever way you see fit. If you don't wanna go through the work of having to hand pick them, maybe you've got a lot of crops, then you can um, wet the leaves of the plants and sprinkle cornmeal 
if the worms ingest the cornmeal, uh, it expands in their body and it kills them. There's a way to 100% get rid of every cabbage worm you have almost overnight. And that is with one of my favorite products that I use in the garden, BT. I'm gonna try to pronounce it. It's Bacillus thuringiensis, subspecies Kurtaki strain. Kurtaki, BT, it'll say that on every bottle. BT is a bacteria that is completely harmless to humans. This is considered organic, but it will kill all the worms, any type, not earthworms, but any type of um, chewing worm, almost on contact. I have sprayed this and seen worms like drop off, but if not on contact within like 24, 48 hours, you're gonna see little dried up nasty worms either hanging from the leaves or on the ground. And again, it's completely harmless to humans. So BT, I'll put a link down below. It is awesome. Now I use BT, these are all my um, brassica beds right here. I used BT two, two weeks ago because as you can see, these older leaves actually have holes in them. They're being eaten. They have, they've come off the plant, but you can see that the new growth within the last two weeks is almost free of any type of pest damage. Now I'm gonna go ahead and spray again because this is good to apply every week or two. So it's been about two weeks, so I'm gonna apply it again. And all you have to do is take your garden sprayer and I put about a tablespoon of BT uh, per, well this is a two gallon sprayer, so per two gallon. And I'm also going to put a little bit of the Neptune's Harvest fish and seaweed fertilizer. You could also use the um, tomato and veg formula from Neptune's Harvest as well. They both work really great as a foliar feed. So you can kill two birds with one stone or kill worms while you're feeding your plants. So put that in a gallon sprayer or two gallon sprayer and make sure that you get the top and bottom of the leaves because like I said those worms hang out on the bottom of the leaves so you definitely want to make sure you hit that underside and that's it every week or two spray the BT you're giving them a foliar feed if you use the uh, seaweed fertilizer or any any organic liquid fertilizer mixed in there you're killing two birds with one stone for real and uh, you're not going to have any issues with cabbage worms this year or any year to come so I hope that solved a problem for you. I hope you don't have to be afraid to grow brassicas. If you're in a mild winter climate like I am right now, get the transplants in. It's a little late to plant the seeds, but get the transplants in. If you're in a cold climate, cold winter climate, then, you know, it's only a few months until uh, you can get them out. You can get them out before the frost is over because they are frost hardy. So if you got ice and snow, you got to wait. But if you're just some frost that's left, you can get them out. So maybe February, March, depending on your area, look at the Farmer's Almanac to find your uh, last frost date and uh, plant accordingly. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, thumbs up, make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you next weekend. Have a great week.